Thank you for keeping perfect time and thank you for the wonderful translations. And I'm hoping that you will introduce yourselves also, the translators. Um, may I now invite Rita Kotari to come and make a presentation. Thank you, yeah. It's actually something of an arrogance to come right in the beginning of a conference to present your work and then to go away. Uh, so I'm committing that sin today for reasons that are somewhat beyond my control. Uh, so do my apologies for going away this afternoon and not being around to listen to some of your presentations. Yeah. I'm sort of going back to something that Aditya mentioned in his opening remarks when he was talking about how there will be simultaneous translation. And he cited this as a signal of a cultural exchange uh, in the kind of global world that we are now living in. And I want to dwell for a couple of minutes on this, on this issue and ask ourselves whether translation, whether simultaneous or otherwise, uh, is indeed an evidence of a global world or is it an evidence of a world that has sealed its boundaries to each other? Of a world where uh, borders of languages and borders of nations have sealed themselves to each other? Uh, I want to Aditya this是一个就是这个这个活动是一个文化之间交流的一个信息那我想呃呃他有一种呃呃这怎么办呃我同步翻译呃我想问呃提出这样的问题我们要问问自己呃翻译是不是真的这么样的同步进行呃在这翻译
She not Chinese. Oh, uh, Ch from China. The walk, as in W A O K, walk. Oh, so we here met a word like Chinese chutney. This is the Chinese chutney. This is how to get into this place. We saw that we can see the chutney in the background, but we can see the border here. Hmm. That being said, not for a moment do I want to undermine the very significant role translators generally play, not only usually, but even today, even what is going on right now in this room. And I want to sort of bring our attention to the fact that the three translators here, Wang Cheng Ming, Chang Xin Wang, and Huang Viang, from translating from Chinese to English and English into Chinese, the three translators here, who are straddling between what might be officially considered standardized Chinese or Mandarin to English. What are these processes by which certain politics of knowledge, certain forms of knowledge which has hitherto been invisible to us, that has not entered into the archive of what we think is familiar knowledge to us, becomes visible to us. There's a very well-known book by Lawrence Venuti called The Invisible Translators. And I think I want to remind ourselves that we do not make our translators invisible. At the same time, I also think that the role of translators is not a simple one. It is not, as is usually in a romantic sort of a spirit, considered to be one of bridging gaps, but also one that disrupts, one that, that complicates the available epistemologies to us. Uh, 翻译者的一个角色搭建桥梁，让两边可以沟通。事实上，呃，翻译者其实扮演了一个呃，让这个沟通呃更加的复杂，而让不可见的东西可见的一个角色。Take for instance the talk previous to mine by Professor Sunger. The text that the series of talks that she talks about provides to us. So this is San Manjui. And she provides to us an alternative imagination of the nation. Right? I find it quite interesting when you read the abstract in English, the translators have chosen in each state, whether they talk about the state or of the nation or of people's rights. In each instance, although they translated into English, but they have found it necessary to provide to us within the parentheses the original word. Almost as if to say that the cultural residue, the remaindered, can, is not easily resolvable. That while we do use the English words here, that the modular nation does not have an easy equivalent neither in reality nor in language. And I find it interesting that these linguistic parenthetical markers in the text remind us that there might be other imaginations of the nation, of different understandings of people's rights, which are made available to us by constantly evoking to us that while nation, whether the nation is the same as Minzu, I, 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 maybe I'm not pronouncing the nation it correctly. So this question, therefore, of an equivalence, a commensurability between concepts and between linguistic labels is sort of important to think about. Uh,就像当我在阅读孙哥老师的文章，还有呃聆听他的演讲的时候，呃，我们看呃我们看见了他提供了一种呃对于。
呃，民族的一种替代性的想象，从呃孙孙中山先生的思想里。而当我们在阅读这个我中文文本的时候，我发现呃，像呃呃翻译者他把原来的字放进了括号里，那我们可以透过这个原来的字。这个放入挂号的原来的字，使我们呃意识到说，其实永远都会有一个文化性的剩余的意义，没有办法那么容易的解决。所以我呃呃，所以这个挂号也是也呃，像民族这样子的一个中文，在我在读的时候，我可以呃想象呃另外一个另外一个文化的存在，呃呀，这中间也包括了一种呃语言语言。语言交换的一个劳动在里面。In the same way, now I want to come to the third question and the, and the third issue, which is one of English language, which again, between these Asian contexts, we can see that as uh, as a as a as a as a kind of site of politics that plays out in many processes of democratic thinking, but also in the process of knowledge making. And translation has a very important role to play even there. So these interactions that take place between our own languages, whether in China or in India, and between the English language, which all of you are dealing with, and I am dealing with, and there are other people here in the audience, uh, what is the role of English in consolidating or in, in enhancing or sometimes in breaking the dominance of certain forms of hegemonic forms of knowledge. So for instance, if we go back to Professor Sunger's talk, we would, these alternative imaginations of nation would not have been available to us, we would not have known about those had this not come to us through the English language, those of us who do not have access to these texts. Uh, at the same time, the same global dominant language is being invoked in some sense to talk about decolonizing the nation. So this particular paradox about the language that we are all dealing with, given our own linguistic economies, needs to be kept in mind. 第三点，我想呃想讨论的是关于英文的角色。呃，英文其实是一个呃政治的一个一个呃一个地呃一个区区块呃现场。呃，在那里呃关于呃民主的呃过程，还有呃许多政治的思想，都是透过英文翻译进我们的文化。而没有呃，我们今天也是在这里透过翻译来讨论这个呃去呃去殖民。我们的思想，还有去殖民我们的民族，那呃，所以这个英文呃，英文的角色呃，是一个呃重要的课题，呃，我们应该要呃呃，就它的一个霸权性的角色，但是它同时也扮演了我们质疑呃这个呃质疑这个霸权，它也扮演了一个重要的位置。I will also turn for one last time to. A particular expression from Sunger's abstract, and then turn to my own work. She refers to the reification of oppositional discourses, right? Discourses where the idea of the nation, as understood in traditional Chinese society, as opposed to the idea of nation inherited from certain form of Western modernity and how these, these get juxtaposed almost as mutually exclusive oppositional discourses. And she sort of intervenes in that process by talking about the text that she does. How? Uh... Uh... 孙哥老师讨论到了一个，就是关于呃两个对对立的固定化，嗯、呃，对，呃，像是呃像是这个民族的这个概念，呃，呃，他呃介入进这个民族的概念，民族。
Excuse me, can you repeat this point? Oh I my God. Get it, sorry. The, la the last. Uh, I think I was. Of opposition, yeah, uh, I was only quoting from yeah. the English translation, maybe which, which Wang would have done, right? From the English translation, which talks about the reification and opposing discourses. Oh, how would, uh, yeah. 我只是, uh, 想要提, uh, 从孙哥老师的文章里面, 关于这个概念, 我想要接, uh, 进一步讨论, 就是这个 reification, uh, 固定化这个, uh, 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 yeah. I mean, if you refer to this line, apparently radicals, westernized, westernized liberals, and conservative localists were reified as two positions opposing each other. I'm looking at the abstract here. Page nine in the English. Uh... Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Page nine, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Under the modern significance of San Min Jui. Yeah. Yeah? The fourth line there. That's that's all that was summarizing. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So with these sort of general comments uh, at the back of our minds, I want to now briefly turn to some of the self-reflexivity which, from my own work, thereby underscoring the fact that there is a whole underbelly, there's a whole underside to translation processes, to what we decide to translate, how we decide to translate, which text we choose, as opposed to which text we decide to exclude or include. And I think that kind of some theoretical understanding of the practice is quite important. So I just want to spend a few minutes here because we don't have time to go into any great detail. And I don't want to turn this into a kind of a personal journey, but I do want to give some examples here, if I may be allowed, and if there is time. Yeah. Uh, Shenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenzhenz
translation. Uh,就是我在这里就是稍微提一下，但是我不想要进入这个，就是什么是翻译的一个问题。那就是什么是翻译，什么样的文化交换，或是语言交换，可以叫做翻译。那这样好像呃，或者是在当中是不是已经呃
，这个翻译的过程变成是这个文化的剩余，可以变成是一个有生有生产性的呃的的一件事情。那呃，那我举一个例子来说，就像是呃，我们看到在印度常用的一个字就是呃世世俗主义。的翻译当中，那这个世俗主义的字在在呃印度的的的使用，就是有有就是非常的被滥用。那那我说滥用不只是在一般的使用层次上是，是也是在概念的层次上，它也是不断的被滥用。那当然就是也是呃在呃呃就是有这个。这个呃，半半世俗、假世俗等等的呃，许许多多的用法。那呃，但是就是这个事实主义主义的概念，我们今天去说它只是一个西方的概念，或者是说它是一个呃基督教的概念，那这不是一个有有生产性的做法。<咳> So some of the examples that I now give are rather specific, and they may be somewhat difficult because I am talking a very specific languages here. So, for instance, I I began to I began translating from Gujarati, which is the official language of the state I come from, the language of my in-laws, the language of my husband. So, in all respects, a hegemonic language, and I started translating from that language into English. Uh, at a time when many people of my generation began to feel a certain alienation from English literary studies, which was also a certain moment of <clears throat> a disaffection, of decolonization, of feeling somewhat distant from the English curriculum, and of the many ways by which people were coping with what do I have to do with this English poetry that I study in class. When the moment I come out of class, I'm singing Hindi film songs. How do I reconcile with these divergent worlds? Translation, reading Indian texts became one of the ways of coping with that disaffection or with that alienation. Uh, I, I, I today want to talk about is a very, very special translation. So it's a very special translation. It's a very special translation. 那呃，我要说的是，我呃，我我从呃古加拉特语，就是呃印度的呃西北的一个语言，翻译到英文。那这个古加拉特语其实就是我呃我的夫家、我的公婆的语言。那对我来说，当然也是一个一个霸权性的一个语言。那我把它从呃呃，我做的是把呃呃，我做的事情是把古加拉特语翻译进英文。那那我开始做这件事情的时候，也是正好是一个时代，就是我跟我同一辈的人开始感觉到我们在呃，就是在在英语系，在就是跟这个呃英语英语的文学跟这个英文呃有一个非常疏离的关系。那就是我在课堂课堂当当中去读这些英语诗，然后我走出这个呃教室之后。却去看一个呃印印地语的电影，呃，就是这整个经验上非常的呃非常脱离的的一个经验，让我们呃这一代人感觉到呃就是就是对我们的情感上跟呃英文已经发生了这样的一种疏离。嗯。呃 ，The journey begins. With translation of many kinds of poetry from Gujarati into English. 我挑选了一个，呃，我要说的是，就是这个，呃，翻译，呃，翻译的民主就是这样子一个看不见终点的一个一个一个旅程。那，那就是我不能把它呃只当成是一个。一个语言上的一个一个转换，而是一个一个翻译的介入，对，然后这样的一个一个一个渴望是看不到终点的